through, like, through the you never. Else to go on. Listen to the words. It talks about people that you know either can't forgive or the people that are that die unforgiven by others. Ah! <laughs> and be yourself. Live free. <laughs> Parents don't think anything about Metallica. They just ignore it. In the sand, Finally, someone in metal saying something right. Try! Ah, oh, just fucking reality, you know what I'm saying? Reality! Some shit Let's you just try. can't yeah. change, man. You just can't change. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I want to be listening to the Metallica albums for the fucking ages. Hey, this is a man who's guilty in his mind. He always holds the key, but he doesn't know how to release himself. He's not in prison by anyone but himself. Uh, probably wherever I may roam. Uh, just the fact that it's bugged. started writing Sandman that just it felt it's like a motherfucker well, the songs we had were quite a bit more simple uh, a little more to the point uh, we realized that we needed a little more thickness in the sound a little more muscle <laughs> The recording studio we recorded this album at was in North Hollywood called One on One. And we went in, oh God, October? October, and we didn't walk out of that place till sometime in May or June. I don't know, it's, it's kind of blurry now. James, you still thinking of maybe using some kids on the middle section? Just one. Just one to do which, which the <laughs> part before you come in with a low voice? That is a, yeah, there's that whole section where it's an E. And then it goes up. That's like a dad teaching his kid back. Mm -hmm. So I got the idea of him like teaching it to him. He'd say one line and his kid. He's got a key. It's going to be real. So it was just like, you know, it's a little bit like building a house, you know, if you have a, a good foundation, then I remember, yeah, I'll be in there, you know, pounding away, the other guys will be around the drum kit, you know, banging away, and there'll be all this energy coming from it. <laughs> dynamics kind of cool on the hi-hat though just like in terms of the backbeat you know the big backbeat that Lars Ulrich kind of snap on the old snare huh <laughs> Lars will you, you make the next couple versions a little more peppery off the top a little more weight into it 
you want? Wait, I'm your fucking guy. Oh, wait for her now. <laughs> we just wait for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get what? Jesus. I don't mind any of the butt of jokes as long as they're as low as mine. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go. I think we kind of all fessed up to the fact that we just needed to bring somebody else into our tightly knit organization and work with us in the studio. And the only name that actually ever came up was this guy named Bob Rock. So me and James flew up to Vancouver, hung out with him for a couple of days, and it was like the vibe was there right away. One of the first bands I ever did was a band called The Subhumans. Dimwit was the drummer. I think it was Brad yeah. Cunt played guitar. No, Brad Cunt was in Rabbit. No. Jerry Useless went to jail for 20 years for anarchy. He blew up a BC Hydro substation here. <laughs> Shithead was DOA. Who's the guitar player? Oh, uh, Subhumans. Fuck. And then I did the Pointed Sticks. I did the Dills. The young Canadians, the K-Tells. They did Let's Go to Fucking Hawaii. Let's see, Lover Boy. Oh, uh, what's that, Rand? The Motori Crew. Motori Crew. Motori Crew. Who's that? He's fine. Right. We're gonna have to. Cold. We're gonna have to leave now. Well, we can't really write songs together. Over the tour, basically, just get riffs here and there. Bring out the four track. I got this Fostex four track that I've had since '84 or something. There's, you know, ride the lightning riffs on it. You know, you just gotta hit certain buttons, just ride it. Also, <laughs> get a job at El Compadre. For instance, the the main riff in Sandman was was just something that I wrote one night, you know, three o'clock in the morning. That's how I come up with like a lot of the stuff that ends up on albums. Yeah. It's like it's just like jamming at, at three o'clock in the morning. And when it came time to start you know, getting songs together. Lars called me up and said, hey, this is a great riff, you know, on your tape. I go, what, what are you talking about? And he played it to me over the phone. I go, oh, yeah, I remember that. And that was only, like, the second or third time I'd ever listened to it. Now, 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 now. And then the tail on it, I suggested that he do, like, three of the, so, wow, now, 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 three of those. And then the tail. You come with it on guitar, mandolin, or bass, or whatever is this idea, and you just put it on tape. And then later on, somewhere down the line, it could be six months, six days, six hours later, James usually, like, you know, he contributes most of the music, and, and Lars, like, contributes, like, arrangement ideas and such. And then we'll all come in and and uh, see how it feels, the four of us, playing playing the song. Sabatru is at least a title that's been around for a long, old time. Struggle Within has. Enter Sandman, I think, has been around the longest. You know, everyone's going, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so 120, 20. he kicks in 121. And then back to 121 for when that Tom section comes in in the middle. 120 guitar only, 121 when it's done. Yeah. 120 the body of the song. There was this guy um, that we'd known for days or something, and he comes into the rehearsal room and we're playing these songs, you know, and, and he's got a timer and he's writing down these notes and all this. And, He'd say, hey, well, maybe we should do, you know, you take that a little bit longer. Or, you know, there's too much E all the time, and there's this and that, and you should do F sharp there or something, you know. And James, he's, you know, his music is his heart, you know. You don't, you don't fuck with it. And so it was kind of weird for him, I think, the most, because he, not that he'd really say a whole lot of words or anything, but the guy would say something, and he'd kind of like, you know, he could like burn a hole <laughs> with his eyes. It's like, what are you talking about? This is my music, you know. And eventually, and we try it. We try the idea, and a lot of the time it'll work because Bob has uh, amazing musical vision and you know foresight is really cool. Is that stage gear from Europe? <laughs> be in there. We could send like Exodus. <laughs> a day in the studio, well. A day in the studio was actually, it's pretty nocturnal. There's no fucking windows there. You can't tell what the hell time of day it is. As far as the drum tracks, Lars likes to work at night. 
sleep all day, and uh, I'm pretty much the opposite. We'd say, you know, okay, we'll, we'll come in at three in the afternoon and, you know, I'd be there. Honestly, they paint white lines on the front road so they say you can't drive there, but they don't actually put anything there to prevent you from driving on white <laughs> fucking nails or anything. Uh, okay, good enough for fucking us, isn't it? Beautiful. He'd get there at four, then have to eat, and then he'd take a nap, and then the fucking... Those troops are waiting for that word to attack, but the nice diplomatic <laughs> blitz may have put well, that on hold like for a while before they're changing at You guys never change. Where's the black uh, stuff in the regards to the forces are right there? You gotta put some gas mines. in your force somehow, Larry. You know, you know, it wouldn't be until seven he'd get a stake in his hand. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh. <laughs> Show me some payola wrist, man. <laughs> what? Got phone call. Get the fuck out of here. Successfully clean. You know, it's it's basically start whenever certain people were ready to go. And <laughs> hurry up, boys. We gotta get these first four drum heads so we can. All right, let's oh, go. Oh, the camera's on. Oh, oh let's go. Where's your cake? <laughs> Okay, let's rock. It's fucking two o'clock in the morning. There's nobody in LA right now is having any fun. They're all in bed. We're here, so let's fucking rock. good it was a little ragged part wise though you know um you were missing cymbal crashes and i have my very set patterns i'm very 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 moody as i'm sure the other guys behind told you <laughs> oh jesus wow i'm very like vibe oriented and like this time around i just wanted to get more of a kind of a swinging kind of just rhythmic, kind of some shit going on back on the drums. I don't know, I'll have to talk to my lawyer. Oh, okay, you lawyer, call my other James lawyer. You can't have to work it out. Me and my wife. Do you want to hear it with vocals? I Go sing it. <laughs> <laughs> no. My throat is really fucked up right now. God, buddy, pal. I wouldn't ask you to do a drum roll if your arm fell off. Ha 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 ha!
the vocal I'm sorry, I'm sorry I laughed. The vocal line goes exactly with the guitar. It's one verse and one chorus. That's all I ask. You can't play the song without me or what? No, it isn't. But I think James made himself quite clear. I don't give a fuck. Sure, let's do it. James, fucking blow your voice out, man. Oh, man. And then, uh, then Lars won't have a, a vocalist at all tomorrow to fucking cut his track. Well, let's do the whole song. If you ever need a drummer or anything, you figure out. Ever need a drummer? <laughs> Out a <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> Cutting the drum tracks like that was, was inspirational in that we all played together, just like we would at rehearsal. And uh, everyone was going off to you know, set the track, but uh, Lars's drums were going on to the master tape. Everyone had to put up with the, the drum tracks, which are always really fun. So I wasn't the only one uh, in living hell. We keep playing for a while at the end. What? We keep playing in the live section. We'll have to drop it in tomorrow. That's what I do it anyway. Huh? You're gonna sit and fiddle with it tomorrow anyway. Right? I'd rather do it live than do it tomorrow. So if we keep playing, I feel like I got some good shit that we're gonna do. Fucking drum solo. <laughs> okay. I love the confidence that I was getting. Well, I'm totally confident in you, Lars. <laughs> goes down 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 ga 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 boom it's just kind of imagine that when you play it again you know what i mean We're going to take like 25 minutes here and change the snare head and do another set. Okay? Uh, do you feel like I'm all over the place? Because I don't. I can use it until I want to start. I, I'm not saying that you're all over the place. I'm just saying the overall feel isn't as good as what it was. And... But that's probably got a lot to do with the other three guys. Well, also. I think it's got a lot to do with it. Yeah. So uh, there you go. We'll just tune up the snare and do it one more time. And... And then uh, we'll and start Bob's your uncle. And then Bob's your uncle. The whole thing was positive as far as everybody playing together, except sometimes when it would take maybe a few too many takes and we would get a little uh, little uh, upset, you know. Um, but that's going to happen, you know, going through a song 20 times in one day. That's the live version. Can you hear the live version goes into like a big jam like that? Huh?
Freebird. Yeah. I can really hear that like 15 minute fucking guitar solo yeah. wailing right there at the end. Yeah. Harmony yeah. guitars. Skinners. I can, I can see that too. Yeah. You get the support act to come out and play with yeah. stuff. Like five guitar players like the Outlaws. Why don't we just get some people out of the audience like you two did? Hey, you play guitar. Hey, you play guitar. Hey, you play guitar. Hey. Oh, you sound so good because you don't say that at all. I really like what you play in the solo. Mm -hmm. Actually, everything you play, I'm going to play the solo. Thanks, Bob. You play the solo. Fucking hell. So it's just kind of, what are you going for? You sure it's the, the fact that this is our last drum track? Are you sad, Lars? Uh, I'm a little sad, yeah. I'm having a really good time. And I know everybody else is. I know I speak for everybody else. <laughs> you can tell the vibe. The vibe is quite serious. Yeah. Big song, big song on the record, just for the vibe. <laughs> John Smith, he was. This is what we work. Come on in. Great, man. <laughs> James, you don't know how much it means, man. He came down to the studio with his with his family. Um, he'd been diagnosed with cancer, and he'd been going through already you know, chemotherapy treatments and all that kind of stuff. But he was a huge. Metallica fan, and I think it was through the Make-A-Wish Foundation that uh, he, his wish was to come and hang out with Metallica. I play more of your guys' music yeah. than anything else. If I can't play it all, I can at least play a piece of it, usually. I try, I don't... It's hard, kind of hard, some of the stuff you guys do. Sing a bunch of them. We can't even play it ourselves. <laughs> playing the song with him and looking over at him. He had his little guitar and his playing, and God, that kid was in seventh heaven. I mean, it was great. that we helped in a small way to give him a little bit something more to fight for, you know? And so that was a good day, good feeling that day. We wanted to concentrate a little more on the vocals. Hey, is this on? Never really took the time to, to do that with any of the vocal stuff. <laughs> Double that up. It's pretty good, but it just needs a little more uh, soul or character, a little more head feel. In there. Never shine doing what I should. Never free, never me. So I don't be unforgiving. Or vocal wise, we tried a couple different things that I hadn't done before. I would do basically what Lars was doing with the drums. It was a master track. If uh, you know. A word was wrong or out of key, we'd punch in that word or whatever, uh, which was a lot easier. So let's get it. No, never shine doing what I've shown. Never free, never me. So I don't be unforgiven. Oh. One more time. It's got to get the unforgiven again. <clears throat> <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> never free, never me. So I don't be unforgiven. Oh, that's a fucking great picture. You are the coolest one. Yeah. Thanks, dude. It's Lars Ulrich's favorite magazine because it has large breasted <laughs> He also likes the best of Busty, which comes out annually. You didn't bring any magazines for James. 
Yeah, I did. Oh, oh. no. Torso oh, Han Show inches. There. Yes. Yes. Bob Rock used to read this while they were making Eric slippery John Bob magazine. She left it here when it was the last time. This, no, these, these are Jason's magazines. Uncut and Play Guy. <laughs> Really in fact, this JC. See, look, the there's an ad for, for the studio in here. <laughs> there's an ad for the studio in Uncut. Do you want to watch this Madonna pornographic video? Yeah. No, no. Why, why do you bring all this stuff by? Code of the road, man. <laughs> we'll go from the top. Let's do this first verse. Try it like that. Say your prayers, Say your prayers little, little one. one. Don't forget my son. We're having fun here, okay? This is fun, James. <laughs> Regular voice. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping one eye open. Same delivery. Sleep with one eye open. Cool, let's do it. On this track? This track. I'll talk you in, one with thin, keep you free from sin, till the Sandman will come. Look at that head. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Oh my, she's actually doing that? Oh, oh, that's, the start one. Oh. <laughs> that's just the FBI warning. <laughs> <laughs> that? oh, that's as close no as the they... Madonna Bush you'll ever see. Oh. 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 This is Madonna's new image. It's great. Madonna erotica. She's Madonna serious. always takes chances. It's so good. Look at this. The tent of doom. <laughs> uh, for guitars to kind of keep the the close crunch, you know, the tightness, we had to build this kind of a tent thing, which was basically uh, some foam walls and some U-Haul uh, blankets and you know all that. Not that I like. He does get that headfield god sound. Especially guitar wise. Uh, you know. It needs a little more <clears throat> down here or you know, a little mid crunch, you know, he's you know, exactly kind of what I was looking for. His uh, stepbrother uh, played drums, and uh, they uh, would have a little band out in the garage, and I think he got inspired by that. Everybody starts out in the garage, and <laughs> either it fades away or it becomes something good. Well, you originally started him on the piano when he was little, and his sister and him both took and uh, he ended up with a guitar. A good friend of his played guitar and taught I think he did a nice job. I was just listening in there what you were cutting and he's uh, really improved in the guitar playing. And instead of the power chords, I think he's getting into a little uh, instrumental and good guitar. I like that. James are there doing James' shit, and then they have this closet down the hallway. <laughs> now I'm sitting here um, listening to all the takes off the floor, and uh, 
trying to make some basic notes and trying to, you know, just get an idea of where the best uh, performance is and where the best shit is from the takes. Secretary of State Baker to request that the United Nations Security Council meet to formulate the necessary arrangements for this war to be ended. This suspension of offensive combat operations. Die clear. The other part of, of the process of getting the drums together is, is uh, the drum editing part of it. Um, you sit down and got you know 20 30 takes of, of songs go film him or something go see see that what he's doing now he's putting pieces together Isn't basically randy Razorblade, a uh, brilliant engineer he would then basically sit and like cut the tape together you know that way you find the bits that have the most spunk and the most vibe and the most attitude to it we have about 250 fills for this song <laughs> If you know anybody that needs a couple fills. Yeah, if you know anybody, yeah, we have drum well, we, fills for sale. We could have used some of these fills about four months back. Bottom would be proud. That's Jason. <laughs> yeah, we gang up on Bob Rock. <laughs> what do you got? Paul, he had a name check. You were just one of the piolas, and that was, was that the, him? That was the final thing, yeah. They thought, since we were so, you know, we didn't get anywhere, basically. So they thought, well, let's make this Chase. guy the front man, and, and I'm sure all the chicks will go fucking gaga after they see him. <laughs> Consequently, it didn't work either. Bob used to be a woman. Look <laughs> <laughs> at tough guy. <laughs> Nice hair color. Did you make it? Bob, look, Bob Rock looked like 10 years ago. Notice only one chin. <laughs> Woo. It looks like How come? clipped by the great. How come this guy is on the denim. side by himself? Was he like the leader? Or was yeah, the... he's the leader. He told you what to do? That girly looking guy? That's bad. <laughs> no fucking way. You look like my mom. Good thing there's no record player here. Or else it'd get really ugly. I think you can put him down now and kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> Check us out, man, we're mobile. Again, you know, everybody talks about us selling out and thinking that, uh, thinking that we've, we're done in and we can't write music anymore and that. They're gonna find out if they can't predict what we do. A lot of it was done with an amplifier. You know, I had one bass and it was an electric bass. And wherever I happened to be, I just, you know, and I'd have to hear it, so I'd hit it really hard, beating the crap out of it. But now it's part of my style when we play. Bob and Randy couldn't hear the actual noise that was coming out of the speakers. Uh, the pick sound on the bass was interfering what they were hearing coming out of the speakers. So they had to put a wall of foam in front of me so that they didn't hear the pick sound and they only heard the bass sound out of the speakers out in front. The wall foam there, guys. It takes 10 inches of foam to keep me back. <laughs> He's the toughest guy. On this album, we really went after uh, a rhythm section, an actual rhythm section, like it's supposed to be, like everybody else has known about for a long time, but we're just now realizing it or something. Lay back that backbeat. Wait for it.
fucking big brains are here. Um, which part might that mean? What he's gonna play over the rip. I don't like it. Oh, I don't like that. Because it mimics the part that's coming right after it. That's why I like it. I kind of take it too. That's why I do like it. Really? I mean, we can do it that way. I don't think it's good, man. I think it's just it's, it's, it's ignoring the dynamics of the song. That's okay. what I'm saying. You're ignoring it. Even your toms don't come thundering like, boo, 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 boo. You know, they're gonna they're coming in like kind of. Yeah, they got lots of feel. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. The bass should be with them, right? Maybe doing the same part, but just not fucking boo, 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 boo. That's what I'm saying. Let's okay, Jay. Uh, okay, let's try this, Jason. Okay. through a bunch of different bases and all different configurations of my amplifiers and Bob just helped me along the way and saying you know what is the bass sound that we're out to achieve here what's going to work with the guitars what's going to work with the the bass drums and not kill them Because the guys in Anthrax and Megabeth would just like tease him so much if it was melodic and nice, right? Where's my goddamn food? This is fucking horrible. Don't go crazy, Metallica! Yay! What? Look, Best we won. Performance. Stone Cold Crazy, Metallica. Ooh. about going to do some singing in Vancouver? I'm real excited. I got a chill. <laughs> I think everybody kind of got a little burnt in L.A. <laughs> yeah. What about on, huh? Bob really needed, like, just a change of, like... I got the same just about right. <laughs> just surroundings for, like, a few weeks. I want everything to stop. So I went up to Vancouver for a couple days. I would sing some songs. And do you know little guitar things here and there? Right across from the strip joint too. <laughs> it's nice to be in Vancouver, out of shit hole LA, but lots of things to do at night. It's <laughs> a real good Vancouver Tuesday. Catch the evening shift at the five. That's the number five orange. The strip club down the street. I was telling you about. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're working all the time. You would know about that. Yeah, we slave away. In there. Never go out for food. Never go out. Hey, fucking Hetfield, come on. Oh, you're just recording a goddamn album. What the fuck? He's here. Well, I'm tired of you going to the, coming out here and fucking looking at trees. No, I'm man. tired of this nature trip that you've been on every hey, album. Hey, brother. Tone it down. Can I try this dressing? I can't fuck around anymore. Bad as hell. It got fun, actually, for a little while in the studio, <laughs> experimenting with things. I would try a bunch of different shit, you know. Certain amps, like old, uh, old thing that the Supro that Jimmy Page was using and shit. Uh, some twelve-string stuff. Uh, you know, sitar thing on uh, a Rame Rome. That's just the cool thing about guitar. You can kind of get a little wild with it. Wow, huh? <laughs> Fuck, 
second. I'm wow. buying it what? now. Listen to both of them and decide which one sounds best. I think that's what we should do is we should do the frowns and then we should try and get something that is a little more got a little more of different. a different sound. So oh. it really sticks out, maybe even like the Leslie 12 string. Like right. we talked about yesterday. What? <laughs> Dick! <laughs> James and Bob flew up there, did some vocals, guitar with dubs and stuff. I came in towards the end of it and helped along with a bunch of production things. It's James's fault, Lars. It's James's fault, man. Get the fuck out of here. I'm here. Let the recordings begin. Everything that's been put down the last four days, you can erase it. I'm here. <laughs> Let the real shit start. Have you lost your ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Did they make you bend over, man? <laughs> it's okay. You're the it's head okay. field guy. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get him, so we're going to get you instead. Oh, yeah. They go, I got an idea. Cool. So where are we going? She didn't. Oh, I don't have it. <laughs> hey, what? The jacket. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of Vancouver just uh, kind of got to me last night. Digital age, huh? I can't wait till I to play drums. That's the next album. <laughs> we just gotta play them once. in the songs, we go out drinking, come back three <laughs> months later, and the album's done. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I come into the studio one morning, there's a fucking table like from here in Gibraltar that has like, you know, like just tambourines and wood things and shit and things that, you know, you shake and, I mean, just things you just hit with sticks and with iron and things that clap. I mean, just any kind of sound you could ever imagine.
as far as I'm concerned, are like, are going to be classics for both you guys, with your fans, but also on the radio. But the first song off this album that should come out is Holier Than Now. See, you know, how it sits after he's done the solo, and even... Yeah, but also, think of the impact that that solo was just over the banging bit, and it was a total fucking shredder. And then you came back, and then there was another little bit of vocal, and the guitar thing that goes... You're building this building. You are. And you finish up. That's cool dynamic. That feels south. Ideas for guitar solos can come from anywhere. I mean, from any instrument, from any sort of rhythm from hearing a piece of music, like maybe classical music, and you'll hear a little melody and you'll think, that would go really good in a guitar solo. I think probably what it will probably end up being is maybe that with a Marshall or something. A call me. Hey, let's try it. We're gonna try everything all at once. Oh. And turn everything up and play that way. Roger, that would be number two. Great. More crappy fucking photos from Hal Fan. Na,na,na,na,na.成功、成功、辛い状況で、その辛い状況での制作活動みたいなところからエネルギーを生んでいたっていうことが以前はあったんですけど、まず。Now I lay me down to sleep. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord, my soul to keep. Pray the Lord, my soul to keep. If I die before I wake. If I die before I wake. Pray the Lord, my soul to take. Pray the Lord, my soul to keep. <laughs> He's hungry. What did I do wrong? That's <laughs> not. Excellent. Need to breathe. Yeah, it was better when you don't breathe. It's better when you don't breathe. It's got a little more anxiety to it. <laughs> Let's don't do a, a yeah. A yeah! At the end. Do something else. Womo! All right. Or okay. Child! Fire Womo! Here we go. Sure. Take that one out. Too. Which, which one? That little reverb. Mm -hmm. Only I want a little more kick and make sure that first ga 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 is up, okay? On the drums? On the snare? No, on the on the guitar. Oh, ga the guitar. ga 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 ga. Okay, and a little more kick. There you go. Yeah. Probably the biggest song of your career, right there. You witnessed it. The first song I heard. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Cashmere of the 90s. There were a couple arguments between uh, Lars, me, and Bob. You know, Bob gave up too easy, though. <laughs> Lars, what is your problem? I don't the have heavy a guitars aren't loud enough. Okay, he walked in the dynamics when they come in. You don't sense that the heavy guitar is coming. Right, they're not loud enough. The rest of the shit, they're that... not loud enough. What is the problem? You could start by taking. The... I don't want to take the other things down because when those things were down, when I heard them, there was nothing there. It There's needs to be up. It, yeah, it need, those things need to be up during the shots. It goes bum, bum. It's not bum, bum. It sounded stupid, so I turned them up because it's the only thing there. It's the only piece of music in those shots 
besides the drums and the bass. So they turned them up. So the next section has to come in strong. It does come in strong. The only thing that doesn't come in strong is the guitars. James was in the car. Didn't that, isn't that what it sounded like? Did it sound like, the, did it sound like Metallica? No, it didn't. It didn't even sound close. The guitars aren't loud enough. I'll let you guys duke it out on this one because I frankly, I don't give a fuck. I'm tired of arguing. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to argue. <laughs> Sick and fucking tired of arguing. Well, that's that's it. Everybody sits around. I think the drums should be a little louder. A little bit louder. I think the guitar should be a little louder. Oh, that lead's not loud enough. Oh, I think we just solo now. <laughs> you just listen to it over and over and over again until you've, you know, found the places where you want to boost certain things and where you want to bring voices in different spots and. You know, strings in bigger and different things like that. So it's a very, very time consuming process. You know, everybody wants to make sure that it sounds good as a unit. One more song done, one more puss added to the wall. Mastering of a record is the process where after you've mixed down on, on like a digital master, you then make production masters and they cut the lacquers that they print the CDs and make records from and stuff like that. And it's a pretty cool process. So how does all the acute shit he's done sound? Sounds really good. It's pretty minimal. It's just uh, a little bit in the bottom as in 100 cycles but it, that varies from tune to tune um and it's all in the mid-range and it's all one or two db nothing in the high top no it's pretty in line it sounds really good When the album came out, we we're, were kind of a, a little bit nervous, you know. I, I knew I was. I didn't know how the people would react to it, you know. I didn't know how our fans would react to it because it's a bit different. Then on Saturday, the band let thousands of fans at Madison Square Garden listen to their as yet unreleased album, simply called Metallica. Here's a taste of the band's weekend. Metallica came to Madison Square Garden, but not to perform. Instead, they gave away 19,000 free tickets for fans to come here and listen to their new album, which won't be in stores till August 12th. Do you feel ripped off that they're not going to play? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, definitely. The tickets are free. Usually, listening parties are held so a room full of music business insiders can listen to their new product. But tonight, everyone was invited, and it probably sets a record for being the largest listening party ever. This is a very weird experience. You know, just being in an arena like this, 15,000 people in there, whatever. It's just like, we can't go up and play. We're kind of like walking around your backstage room. What do we do now, you know? Plus, we haven't played for like 14 months, and we're literally like out of shape. And the other annoying thing is that our album played the garden before we did. Metallica is now on their way to drummer Lars's hometown of Copenhagen, Denmark. That's where they'll kick off their European tour. Metallica will be back on these shores for a tour in October. And what we have here is a duplicating play and it's through an electrical magnetic process to bring the music on the cassette tape. Liner, running a new Metallica release. We're actually molding the uh, CD in polycarbonate, spin coating it, and covering it with a protective coating of poly uh, clear vinyl. This 
the final stage to see the operation of packaging it. This machine is still in the an empty jewel case. It's opening it, putting a lot of inlay in it, the inlay card in the bottom, and then the retainer tray is being put in on this end. presented ourselves very well, I think, um, with the videos that we've released. And there's been different feelings and different vibes from each one. I mean, they're very unique to themselves and very individual, each one of them. You start to become more accustomed to what takes place and all the people that are involved and start understanding a little bit better of what, what is supposed to happen. Fifteen minute break. When I'm out of condition, it doesn't just fuck me up, it fucks everybody else up. Top one was less, Mark. Top one was Ron. It's earlier when we went for the first one, it just, I got a little excited. And I just think I was just pounding metal too hard. And, you know, where there's life, there's hope. Roll sound! videos have come out pretty cool, show different sides of us, and uh, or at least on the Sandman one, everyone was, you know, putting in their idea, you know. I got this nightmare where I'm following it, you know. <laughs> there were some pretty wild nightmares that came out that could not ever be seen by anyone. <laughs> like this, you know, the Skinner tune. Uh, talk fishing, that's okay, you know. Talk business, fuck off, you know. We'd like to go home. You know, got some really good friends at home and they make you feel good, you know. It's like shit, I'm home and talking about the fucking business or nothing, you know. Try and relax. But, uh, you know, they like, they like me for, you know, who I am, not the fucking band shit. The final product, uh, the album, was far and above my expectations from the first time I heard James and Lars' demos. It was a feeling of accomplishment, a very big feeling of accomplishment and, uh, a good boost for my pride personally as well. We all confide with each other and we're all honest with each other. And uh, we all realize you know, how much this really means to all of us. Because this whole thing, this whole Metallica thing, will be with us you know, to our dying day. If you had told me 10 years ago when we put out Kill 'em All that 1992 would have a record that sold almost 9 million copies worldwide. That, I mean, I ask you what kind of drugs you want and ask you if you could share some of them with me because, I mean, I don't know, let's just face it. I mean, there wasn't a lot of people that thought this kind of shit was going to happen with this band Metallica. Acapella! <laughs>
get out of here with that fucking thing. This whole documentary is just gonna be Bob pointing at the camera saying, turn it off. You're supposed to like pretend it's not here. Furthermore, Sorry. this is Tom. Furthermore, you bad guys better fucking use this. You're on the damn phone or fucking around. Soku chasing us around. Well, I've gotten very used to it. You guys are fucking boring, man. It's over, man. Hey, hey, over here. here. You guys would entertain us a little hey, bit. Hey, over here. Be so fucking boring. Hey, man. You fucking use you the goddamn phone, phone license fun. from your fucking long distance phone calls to your Good. fucking butt buddies over in fucking Brooklyn. I'm calling Japan. What do you mean, Brooklyn? <laughs> Is that what you guys are, film crew? Oh, right when we started making this record in October of uh, 1990, we get a phone call from our manager. It's like, well, maybe we should document all this shit. And it's like, sure, okay. If he had let us in on what kind of hell <laughs> that we would actually be going through, like, for the next year and a fucking half, it was like, maybe we'd have second thoughts about it. Oh, this is them filming. Oh, oh, this is them oh. being exciting as well. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what they look like. We're done with that. We don't gotta worry about that anymore. <laughs> oh, you know, I'd... having you guys track us down and uh, you know, trying to dig into us a little bit and get in on it so has been. It's been a cool thing, I mean, really, to, to look back on the stuff and, and see what happened and see how stupid we were in spots and and how cool we were in others. All right, Thrash, come on. No! Oh! Oh! Dicks. Fuckers. You guys are fuckers. Assholes. How'd you feel about having a film crew follow you around? Fuckers. Well, you know. Hey, man, we're busy making a fucking movie. You're laying down an important kick-ass riff that you'll probably forget or never play as good again, and he trips over your guitar cord. <laughs> Jesus! I hate that fucking camera, man. I hate that camera. What the hell? You motherfuckers. You fucking lay around, talk about hey, the phone, watch your cunt language. And then when you, you guys get fucking. Hey, boss!